Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Master Sergeant Kristen Hess, and I am your narrator for this morning's ceremony. On behalf of Brigadier General Mark Kelly, Commander, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, I would like to welcome you to today's change of command ceremony. Today, the men and women of Task Force Medical Afghanistan observe a change of command in which the reins of responsibility and leadership will pass from Colonel Gary Walker to Colonel Gianna Zay. The change of command ceremony is rooted in military history, dating back to the 18th century during the reign of Frederick the Great of Prussia. At that time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. To this flag and its commander, the soldiers of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When a change of command was to take place, the flag was passed to the individual assuming the command. The gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so that all could see and witness their new leader assuming his or her dutiful position. He who held the flag also held the soldier's allegiance. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout military history. At this time, we would like to recognize some of our distinguished guests we are honored to have with us today, the Commander, Bagram Airfield, Major General Mike Murray. The Deputy Commander, Bagram Airfield, Colonel Douglas Chrisman. The Command Chief Master Sergeant, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Jeffrey Brown. Garrison Commander, Colonel Stephanie Gretf. The Commander, 455th Expeditionary Operations Group, Colonel John Wilkinson. The Commander, 455th Expeditionary Mission Support Group, Colonel Michael Grogan. The Commander, Medical Command Deployment Support Operational Command Post, Colonel Nelson Rosen. The Chief of Staff, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Colonel John Gaelic. Representing the Commander, 455th Expeditionary Maintenance Group, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Harvey. The Korean Hospital Director, General Surgeon, Jung-Gik Kim. The Korean Hospital Deputy Director, Family Medicine, Won Chin Chung. In addition, please welcome the Commander of Troops, Deputy Commander for Clinical Services, Task Force Medical Afghanistan, Lieutenant Colonel Mary Guy. The Guide on Bearer, Task Force Medical Afghanistan, Senior Enlisted Leader, Chief Master Sergeant Patrick Scheuer. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, coalition partners, and all members who have taken time out of their day to witness this time-honored tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem by the 3rd Infantry Division Woodwind Quintet, followed by the invocation to be delivered by Chaplain William Roswell.
you will, please pray with me. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and for the blessings that you've bestowed on us. The blessings of life, liberty, and the opportunity to rise to the occasion of new challenges and overcome them. As we have gathered here in Warrior's Way, underneath our nation's flag, we are reminded of the sacrifices so many have made in defense of freedom and the amazing care provided by the brave men and women of the 455th Expeditionary Medical Group. May the sacrifices of those who have gone before us inspire us to put service before self and strive for excellence in every task we undertake. As we give formal recognition to a change in leadership, an opportunity awaits. For those who lead, it is an opportunity to implement wisdom, communicate vision, and inspire confidence and enthusiasm. And for those who are led to demonstrate loyalty, exercise commitment, and inspire confidence and enthusiasm. I pray that you will bless us, O Lord, to these ends, that every one of us may rise to the occasion and overcome the challenges that lie ahead. Thank you for the dedication and service of Colonel Gary M. Walker as he redeploys. We pray you would bless him and his wife Deborah as they are reunited and embark on their new position in life. We thank you for bringing Colonel Gianna Arze to lead the 455th Expeditionary Medical Group. And we pray that you would bless her with wisdom and courage and discernment in this new assignment. May you bless her husband David and their two sons Nicholas and Cole during this separation. And now, Lord, we pray that this transition would be smooth, that our service would be inspiring, and our country and our families, and you, our God, would be honored in what we do and how we do it. We pray this in the name that is above every other name. Amen. Thank you, 3rd Infantry Division, Woodwind Quintet, and Chaplain Braswell. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present the Commander, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, Brigadier General Mark Kelly. Thank you. Well, a great welcome to our group and our squadron commanders, our chiefs, our command sergeant majors, and every airman and soldier who has a part of their day here at Bagram places a caring and healing hand on our nation's sons and daughters from the field. Joe Murray, thanks for attending today. It's great to have you here. And Dr. Kim, it's a, a special honor to have you here shoulder to shoulder with our, our medics. Our coalition partners that are here today, again, a special welcome to you. Very often our nations discuss and debate policy, and we even discuss and debate ways to wage conflict. We rarely debate the way to heal and thanks for being here and helping us heal through the years. Most of us go through our days here at Bagram blissfully ignorant of the immense talent that walks the hallways here at Craig Joint Theater Hospital. I'm comfortable saying that this is the most diverse and challenging medical group in the entire Air Force. No other medical group in the Air Force averages two indirect fire attacks per week. No other medical group has a no-fail mission of 24-7 combat care where patients arrive from many nations speaking many languages, some U.S., some coalition, some insurgents who need to be guarded, some with unexploded ordnance on them or in them. All receive the same level of world-class life-saving care. No other medical group integrates active guard, reserve, soldiers, sailors, and coalition across an area the size of Texas. The phrase hollow ground is often overstated with respect to sporting venues, racetracks, college campuses. But today we're lucky we truly stand on hollow ground. More U.S. blood has been spilled in Warrior's Way in the adjoining emergency room than was spilled on Omaha Beach. This is our nation's first step on the path to recovery and the path home for our true national treasure. But it's just a building, 
until you put combat medics, caregivers, airmen, soldiers, leaders who run this hospital. On the 15th of April, 2013, an IED struck at the finish line of the Boston Marathon, and it resulted, obviously, in a mass casualty event. At that time, the wounded were taken to six different level one trauma centers in the Boston area. Other Boston hospitals that specialized in burns, like Shriners, were put on high alert. Compare that to the 5th of August in Kabul. When a mass cow happens here, the patients come here. Colonel Walker has led Craig Joint Theater Hospital through five mass cows during his time here. This is where the best medical care in the nation exists. This is the Mayo Clinic of Afghanistan. This is our asymmetric advantage. If dust off can get the wound in the hands of these professionals, they will live to see another day. And the people here will do everything they can to get them home to their families. That capability doesn't happen by accident. It happens through training, guidance, priorities, exercises, and unfortunately, real world events. It happens through leadership. The position of 455th Expeditionary Medical Group commander is unique in many ways. It is the only 06 medical command position that is personally selected by the Air Force Surgeon General. Lieutenant General Travis recommended Colonel Gary Walker because he knew it was important to have someone with a surgical background here during this time of rapid change. And he trusted Gary's decision-making capability. There might be some 06 doctors out in the Air Force with flashier staff and school records, but there's no one you'd rather have op over you on your worst day. There's no one with a better record of combat care putting people back together on Air Force operating tables. No one. Colonel Walker led 391 Air Force, Army, Navy, and NATO personnel, two Roll 3 trauma centers, one International Roll 2 hospital, five forward operating bases. He helped sustain the very valued Korean hospital, the Jordanian hospital. He has been a calm, sage advisor to me and the other commanders here in Afghanistan. Recently, General Travis sent me candidates to replace Gary. General Travis's first choice, and my first choice, was Colonel John Azay. Colonel Azay arrives here having commanded the 96th Medical Group at Eglin Air Force Base one of our major medical centers and teaching hospitals. Prior to that assignment, she served as Deputy Director, Air Force Medical Services. She's commanded the 20th Medical Operations Squadron at Shaw, completed three successful tours as Chief of the Medical Staff at Buckley, Shaw, and Tyndall Air Force Bases. She's a board certified pediatrician. Listen to her, she knows what she's talking about. I plan to listen to her a lot and to stay out of her way so she can lead this medical group through another pivotal chapter for Afghanistan. Thanks for attending today and thanks for your service to a nation of war. Thank you, General Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Bronze Star Medal to Colonel Walker. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the Bronze Star Medal to Colonel Gary Walker. The Bronze Star Medal, first Oak Leaf Cluster, is awarded to Colonel Gary M. Walker. Colonel Gary M. Walker distinguished himself by meritorious service as Commander, 455th Expeditionary Medical Group, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, and Commander, Task Force Medical Afghanistan, while engaged in action against an enemy of the United States at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan from 25 March 2014 to 13 March 2015. During this period, while deployed in support of Operations Enduring Freedom and Freedom Sentinel and subject to over 100 indirect fire attacks, Colonel Walker served with distinction as commander for the United States Central Command's largest and busiest combat joint theater hospital and provided command and control for all medical forces in echelon above brigade throughout the combined joint operations area Afghanistan. In these two positions, he commanded 391 Air Force, Army, and Navy coalition partners in eight different locations, a contingency aeromedical staging facility, two Roll 3 hospitals, and four forward surgical elements, 
as well as the provision of theater-wide preventative medicine, medical logistics, behavioral health, veterinary, food inspection, and dental functions. During a historic period of tumultuous change, Colonel Walker led his team in the provision of state-of-the-art care for 383 traumas, 1,400 surgeries, 30,000 outpatient visits, 1,700 inpatient admissions, 116,000 prescriptions, 196,000 laboratory tests, and 603 aeromedical evacuation missions for 2,135 patients. Additionally, when an enemy rocket struck the Bagram Detention Facility, he confidently directed the triage, surgery, and care of 26 high-value detainees. He calmly gui guided his new team, which had been less than three weeks' time on the ground, through nine surgeries and 20 procedures to provide life-saving care, preventing a strategic setback. Furthermore, Colonel Walker skillfully planned and advised senior leaders through a mandatory 23% personnel reduction. He responsibly curtailed excess capacity while simultaneously maintaining all critical trauma response capabilities. Finally, he superbly managed the response to a green on blue event in which 13 patients were rapidly triaged and treated. In the face of international press, he flawlessly led his group to achieve a 100% patient survival rate through this chaotic event. The exemplary leadership, personal endeavor, and devotion to duty displayed by Colonel Walker in this responsible position reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Task Force Medical Afghanistan, Colonel Gary Walker. Good morning and thanks for coming. It's a beautiful morning in Afghanistan. Not too spectacular this morning. I think we'd all have to agree. I want to thank in particular Captain Yang and uh, Master Sergeant Julie DePriest who have uh, put on an outstanding event so far this morning, and our narrator, Master Sergeant Kristen Hess. I recall seven years ago being deployed here with Master Sergeant Billy Hess, uh, who was an outstanding performer at Travis Air Force Base at the time, and uh, this was his third or fourth deployment. I remember talking to him and him saying, Colonel Walker, you know, my wife and I have discussed it. Uh, we both love the Air Force, but I'm going to get, I'm going to come back and put my papers in. Uh, get out of the Air Force. Uh, this is just, with, with children now, it's just become too much and I'd love to serve, but uh, I decided to go back and retire. Well, fast forward seven years, and now Chief Master Sergeant Billy Hess is commander, or excuse me, is a senior enlisted leader at the Air Force Medical Operations Agency, and his wife is here. So, uh, I don't know how that conversation went, but now I see Billy back in the United States taking care of the kids and you here, so. Uh, something happened. Uh, those Chief Master Sergeants really have lots of influence, I guess. I want to welcome General Murray this morning. Uh, thanks for coming. I know your calendar has absolutely zero room on it for something like this, but you made time to come, and I appreciate that very much. I have the Deputy Commanding General uh, for support for our US 4A here is a, is a rare treat, and we appreciate you coming. I see lots of other colleagues here in the front row, my uh, fellow group commanders, uh, Lurch and Mike. Uh, glad you could make it today. Colonel Gradford, thank you for coming. Chief Brown and Colonel Rosen, uh, who provides invaluable over the uh, Horizon medical support to us. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, three to third MMB. Uh, thanks for coming this morning, uh, Dr. Campbell. And particularly thank you and your staff for coming this morning. We greatly admire what you have achieved at the Korean Hospital over the years. Uh, it has been just a stupendous undertaking, and what you have done for the local Afghans is a uh, we won't know for many years exactly the outcome, but it has been a monumental effort, and uh, you are to be congratulated for what you've done. I know our docs and our nurses have enjoyed very much uh, working with you. Thank you for coming this morning. And I think somewhere back there is Colonel Johnny Wright, uh, who's my comrade and, uh, and uh, General Murray's uh, staff surgeon. Uh, his help has been invaluable over the last few months. And then we have close relationship with other federal agency partners. I see some of those in the, in the audience. Uh, and then, sir, uh, your predecessors, Major General Townsend, 
we saw a lot more of him because he ended up spending a lot of time here handing out Purple Hearts. We're glad you're not having to do that. Uh, and I know you are too, uh, and Major General Colt as well. I'd like to just, uh, this event is not about Gianna and I, even though it is a change of command ceremony. It's really, we're here to celebrate another year of successful mission accomplishment in what is arguably one of the most important missions, if not the most important mission in Afghanistan. If we don't take care of our soldiers, sailors, and airmen and Marines, it won't be very long before our war effort will break down. So uh, the size of the audience that's here this morning, I think backs up uh, that you agree with that assessment. And I thank all of you for coming. I'd like to uh, focus just a couple minutes in uh, thanking some specific people. First of all, my task force med A team, uh, starting at the very top, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Woolley and Lieutenant Colonel Trevor, who I see sitting back here. I absolutely could not get anything done without them. They've both been spectacular leaders. Uh, and in the last three months or so that uh, task force med has been reconstituted, it's been absolutely fantastic working alongside our uh, partners in the Army and in our Navy partners down at Kandahar. My senior enlisted leader, Chief Master Sergeant Pat Scheuer, don't know what I would do without him. Uh, and uh, standing in front of the formation over here, Lieutenant Colonel Mary Guy, who is our DCCS, uh, just has had a, a huge, phenomenal uh, effect on this latest rotation. Mary, thank you for what you've done. General uh, Kelly, and by the way, uh, Gianna, one of the benefits of this job is that you get to have not one general officer as a boss, but two general officers as a boss. So, uh, so what you remember that. But as he pointed out, uh, you know, this really is hallowed ground, and I think of this, and, uh, you know, my father's generation, which is World War I generation, they've got the graves at Normandy uh, to kind of commemorate what the forces went through uh, during the Second World War. We've got this special strip of pavement that starts at the bottom of the ramp over here comes down the street and goes into the emergency room. I kind of think of it as my hero's highway uh, where uh, thousands of wounded warriors have passed. Uh, and the good news is uh, that of 100 wounded warriors that go in that door, only one or two come out this door. Uh, but those are the ones that you remember. And I can remember a morning very much like this uh, in May of last year when our dust off brethren uh, landed at the foot of the ramp out here uh, the door slides open, and I see him furiously doing CPR on the soldier. Uh, astride the litter, uh, one of our uh, female uh, dust-off medics, they managed, I don't know how the guys did this, managed to pick the litter up, put it on a gurney, and transport her all the way up here and into the facility with her doing CPR the whole way. And then uh, to see our team uh, do everything they could for the next hour to try to save that soldier. Uh, and we had a cardiac surgeon here at the time and actually did a emergency department thoracotomy, and we know that that's kind of a last resort, uh, but that's what our soldiers all deserve is everything that we can give them. That's a soldier that did not make it uh, as bad as we felt. Uh, his family will have a pain in a last a lifetime. Uh, and it's our job to make sure, uh, and it's really a sacred covenant with our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that we send as many of them home to their families as possible. Um, I remember Command Sergeant Major Martin Barreras came through here in May. Uh, I was not aware at the time of uh, the fame that he had in special forces uh, circles. Uh, he was one of the special forces uh, soldiers that rescued Jessica Lynch back during the Iraq conflict. Uh, we thought we had saved him. As a matter of fact, he got all the way back to San Antonio and uh, it was really a shock to hear that he suddenly and inexplicably died back there. Again, one of those that uh, you, you rack your brain and say, what could we have done to save him? Uh, and um, I know that uh, he was extraordinarily well thought of, and Governor Brewer actually had uh, the state of Arizona uh, fly their flags at half mast for him for a couple of days, which I thought was completely appropriate. And then the overwhelming uh, response to the check mass cow that we had. Um, sir, you'd been here about five days at that time. This occurred on the 8th of July. The checks at that time were responsible for providing our perimeter security. Uh, the evening before, we had had an IDF strike here on Bath, and uh, that team went out in an MRAP uh, to the PU site. For those of you who don't recognize the acronym, that's point of origin, where the IDF was fired from. They did not know uh, that a fairly elaborate ambush had been constructed for them, and a suicide vest immediately took the life of four of them. Uh, we did not know that until they all arrived here and we assessed them. 
Uh, we did have one uh, of their soldiers that for just a brief moment set up and then laid back down. He was the only one that we were able to uh, resuscitate the first day. Uh, I will never forget the response. Uh, he was very, very badly injured and spent more time in the operating room over the next four days than he did back in the ICU. But we'd operate on him for several hours, take him back to the ICU, resuscitate him again, back to the operating room, back and forth. Uh, at the point, we very rapidly ran out of platelets. Uh, because of the massive transfusions he was undergoing, uh, we required a fresh whole blood drive. Uh, the announcement went out over the giant voice, and I walked out and looked, and within minutes, as far as you could see down Disney, there was a line of cars pulled off on the berm waiting to turn into Craig Joint Theater Hospital here to give blood. Uh, enormously gratifying response. Uh, we went through over 250 units of blood products in that young man and were able to get him uh, back to Prague uh, so that he could see his family. And the, the, the nation, of course, was just stunned to lose five members of their military it was something that hadn't happened to them in many, many years. Uh, but to be able to get him back to see his family before he died uh, was a great achievement for us. Uh, we did not think he would make it, but to be able to get him back there uh, was something that our folks just poured their heart and soul into. We're very thankful to be able to get him back. And then, sir, you mentioned the shooting in Kabul in which General Green was killed. Uh, I can still remember the line of uh, 60 sitting out there waiting to discharge patients. Our team just performed magnificently that day, uh, and everyone that arrived alive uh, left alive, and that was an important thing for us. Uh, and then the death of two contractors here on Bath due to an IDF in early December. I know, sir, that you remember that. And then uh, followed shortly thereafter by the loss of two soldiers a week later here. Uh, so those are the ones you remember. And as I laid in bed last night, it's kind of like a movie flickering across for hours. And uh, it's not the first night that's happened. It won't be the last night. But uh, it has just been a wonderful, wonderful experience to be able to, hear and to come here and lead such great medics. And then to kind of help us get us back grounded again, we had the opportunity to uh, participate in Operation Proper Exit. Uh, for those of you who don't know who that, what that is, that's where we bring some folks back uh, that have been severely injured uh, in uh, Iraq, here in Afghanistan. Uh, wounded warriors, many of them come back after over 100 operations to visit the place uh, to kind of help them achieve closure. And it's really interesting to see them disembark from the vehicle. It takes them a long time because all of them are missing one or more limbs. Uh, to hear their stories and then to see them meet with the staff inside, look at some of their x-rays, uh, talk to the staff. And what's really paradoxical about all this is how, how much they thank the staff. And we go, no, 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 no. It's you that we're thinking, uh, thanking for what you have done uh, to uh, secure our freedom. So that is a great uh, thing to be able to participate in and uh, to be able to see kind of the end product of what you do here years later, because most of them don't remember coming underneath this American flag, uh, but to be able to see them walking, talking, conversing, planning their lives. We actually had a young man visit that had lost all four limbs. He was the first quad amputee to survive and has undergone a number of pretty sophisticated reconstructive procedures, um, some uh, free limb transplants. Uh, to see him walking and talking and really having a positive attitude. If you see somebody like that, it makes the rest of your day seem uh, pretty humdrum. And then finally, Colonel Zay, uh, as Yogi, in the immortal words of uh, Yogi Berra, this is deja vu all over again. Uh, Gianna succeeding me here as she did at Eglin. Um, she sort of inherited the mess I left for at Eglin. We had a $65 million reconstruction project we kicked off just as I was leaving, so she got to spend almost all of her three years operating out of a trailer. Uh, and I know she thanks me for that every day that she remembers. Uh, she moved in right next door to me, and uh, uh, she and her husband are putting this stuff away. Her two boys, I was out there teaching them how to hit golf balls across the street uh, into the palm trees on the other side. I mean, two boys, golf clubs, a bucket of golf balls, residential area, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> So uh, being the gracious person that she is, she never choked me like I'm sure she wanted to, but uh, it's great to have you here. I know you would do a fantastic job, Gianna, uh, and this uh, medical group, or the uh, Task Force Med A is in for a, a great treat. And finally, uh, it's hard to believe that a year, almost a year ago, I was standing here, the, how the time passes. Uh, General Kelly's predecessor, General Malachowski, he and I were walking down the hallway to go to the reception, he says, 
Gary, you are a lucky man. And I didn't understand completely what he meant then, but I do now. And Jonna, you are a very lucky woman uh, to be able to come here and lead such a wonderful organization. Again, I thank you all for coming, for the honor of serving with you. Um, God bless Task Force Medical Afghanistan, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Walker. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command of Task Force Medical Afghanistan. Attention to orders. Under the provision of AFI 51-604 and Special Order G15-023, Colonel Gary M. Walker relinquishes command of Task Force Medical Afghanistan to Colonel Gianna R. Zay, effective 13 March 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the Commander of Task Force Medical Afghanistan, Colonel Zay. General Murray, General Kelly, distinguished guests, fellow group commanders, and medics, a welcome and thank you for spending part of your morning with us. Um, General Kelly, it is an honor and a privilege. Thank you for the trust. I will not falter and I will not fail. Colonel Walker, you're a servant leader. You inspire all of us to do our best. You've set the bar high. I thank you for your mentoring and your friendship, but most of all, I thank you for your service, service here at Craig Theater Hospital and throughout your career. Godspeed home, Gary. To the medics of Task Force Medical Afghanistan, focus, stay engaged, now is not the time to alter. I challenge you to do your best always, to serve with a servant heart, and to exceed in excellence in all that you do. Together, we will not falter and we will not fail. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Zay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women of Task Force Medical Afghanistan are proud to have served with Colonel Walker and wish him good luck as he returns to the Defense Health Headquarters, Falls Church, Virginia. We also welcome Colonel Zay as she assumes her new duties as commander. We invite everyone to please join Major General Murray, Brigadier General Kelly, and Colonel Zay in the Commander's Conference Room for reception following the ceremony.